Hey folks. Well, because I am, I guess, the picture frame guy, I have to make another picture frame. This one's different. I know what you're thinking. We already watched her make a picture frame. Yeah, you did. That was a floating picture frame uh, designed specifically for paintings on canvas. Uh, this is different. This is an actual picture frame to put a picture in, like a flat, you know, kind of picture. I've never made one of these, so this will be exciting. I went ahead and milled this down. I got my dado blade in. Uh, I need to cut a quarter inch rabbit. And I'm cutting this quarter inch this way. And it's going to be about three eighths high, somewhere in that ballpark. Because uh, I, I want to have room to get all of the things in there that need to be in there. But I don't know art. Okay, there's a, a glass and a paper frame and then the art and then a backer and then Three eighths ought to give me plenty. The way I'm attaching, backing all of it, it, I'll show you. It'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these, um, get them all ready to go. Most of my milling was done on the table saw, so I have saw marks on here. I'm gonna put those to the back. Top side's pretty. Okay, that's what we're gonna go with. Get my safety gargles, and so I'll go ahead and get these cut. So as I said in the, the floating frame video, your frame is never about being extraordinary. But at the same time, you don't really want it. The, the, the frame is to enhance the art. That's what the frame is for. And give it a way to hang. That's what a frame does. It gives you a way to hang it on a wall. Um, basic square is fine. Um, and that certainly will not detract from the art. But I like to put a little bit of accent on it. So uh, on this part where the rabbit is, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, by the way, sorry, forgot the mic on the first couple sections there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to put just a very slight chamfer. So it's actually going to 45 into the art a little bit. It's not going to be very deep because I have to have room for that glass to set. So I have the router set up. I'm just cutting the corner. That's all I'm doing. I wanted to do it on here because I couldn't get a comfortable fit on the table saw. So I'll go ahead and get these chamfered up as soon as I find my safety glass. Oh, there they are. Okay. And then I have another one to do on the outside of the frame, and I'll show you what that is. So after the routing, what you can see is we sort of have a cove, if you will, on this side, which is the, it's going to look like this. Okay? So we have a cove on this side and just a, a slight chamfer on this side. So that's what that's going to look like. So I happen to know, well, I not happen to know, I just went in and looked, um, my plexiglass is 11 by 14. That's what size I need the inside of the rabbit to be. So got the sled back out. You see me use this on the floating picture frame. Same thing. Only difference here is that when you're cutting this, your rabbit should rest over your straight edge, not not up against it. Um, that should give us the exact size we need to the inside of the rabbit. Okay, Sounds confusing, but it's a lot better than having to do all of the math that's involved in figuring out what size you're going to make a picture frame. So 11 by 14, I'm going to cut my 11s first. And I'm going to give just a, just a tickle more room for just in case purposes. Wrong way. We're gonna clamp that in. That's solid. 
when I say a tickle more, that might be a sixteenth more. Okay, uh, it's not. It's going to be fine. Okay. Um, again, my rule is to not stand right behind the blade because this corner piece, you don't know where it's going to go. So we'll go with that. Nailed it. That's going to go over top of that. Should make my inside rabbit 11 inches or a smidgen over. Now, the big question is, is am I going to be, able, yeah, I am going to be able to hopefully get more than one piece out of this. Cause that's how I planned it, and if that's not the case, I got more milling I got to do. I don't like milling the plumber. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. Up there. Yes. Golly Moses, I am not a basketball player today. What happened here? You may have an issue. Okay, well, we do have an issue. What's happening here? That needs to be against that. So I cut it wrong. Um, this was allowed to ride up on that angle piece. I'm glad I caught it now, and I still have enough to recut it. So let me fix this. So with that, Two exact sides, which is exactly what you want if you want to make a square picture frame. So I always do a test fit before I go any further, just to make sure there's no glaring mistakes. Uh, I'll even go as far as actually taping it into place and then taking the old trusty bent square, just line it up there. Make sure that before you go any further, because if there's no sense doing a whole thing if it ain't where it's supposed to be. Right now, the way this is sitting, it is spot on square. Um, like I said, I've gone as far as taping it together so I know for sure. So I can take these pieces. Um, essentially, we're ready to start sanding this and uh, get it glued together and figure out what I'm going to do with the corners. Normally, you would make a spline. Um, maybe I'll try something different. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but we'll figure it out. Um, I don't know if this is actually the time to experiment. This piece of artwork is actually for a family friend, and this uh, this friend is going through some health things right now. And this is a, a piece of art that she did, and it's just been kind of sitting around. And so we're framing it for her as a surprise. And I don't know that I want to be experimenting uh, on something that's this important. So I'll think about that, and you'll see what I come up with. Okay, upon further review, I've changed my mind. Well, I didn't change my mind. I made a decision. I am going to try something new only because I experimented with a couple of offcuts and it works beautiful. I am going to use dowels to hold this together because, again, we got end grain to end grain. It might stay together forever, but why not be sure? So I have a dowel jig. We talked about this before. From, I think the whole trick to this, it's not really a trick, it's just how you do it. Again, I'm going to make sure that this is perfectly square. I'll take my pencil, and I know that I want this to be right about there. I hand cut that. Hey, here's a tip for you. Remember how I said that my... I guess fluted dowels that I used before it came from like Bob's discount dowel factory or so. I don't know. They were inconsistent. Well, if you go to your big home center, whether you like blue or orange, doesn't matter to me. Um, they sell four foot pieces of dowel. These are probably popular. Doesn't matter. 
because you're not going to see them anyway. But if you want consistency, this thing is five sixteenths for four feet. You just cut them down to the size you need them. I've cut four of them. These are uh, an inch long. I'm going to have a half inch on either side. And that's, that's just for strength. That's just for glue strength is what that is. So we mark this. And whoop, backwards. Okay. Again, line the line up at the 5 16 mark. Make sure you hit that mark or your dowels are not going to line up. Yeah, little snug. Uh, I'm going to drill that there where I have a little bit of, I've already set a drill bit up. Yeah, I went green. Uh, haven't noticed the battery charger for the Craftsman died. You can get another one, um, like on Amazon, fairly cheap too. But I knew the drill was on its way out too. So I decided just to just to go ahead and bite the bullet. I know, Ryobi. Mm, what are you doing with Ryobi? Well, if I'm being honest, it was either Ryobi or the Harbor Freight brand. And I cannot argue with 200 and some tools that run off of one battery. Okay, there you go. I bought this myself with my wife's money. Anyway, we're going to drill this. Again, put a stop on there. Blue, blue tape stop so you know where... You know, you don't want to draw all the way through the picture frame. Same thing on this one. Line it up. Somebody's out cutting their grass, which is hilarious because it just got done raining like half hour ago. They'll be replacing that deck in a year or two. Ow. These two pieces, where are they at? These two pieces go together. You just stick a dial in there. Boop. Dial in there. Boop. Beautiful. So I will drill out the rest of these. And then that also makes the glue up a ton easier because there's, you don't got to hurry. You know, you glue the dial in. You spread a little glue on there, even though it's end grain to end grain. Spread some glue on the other end of the dial. Stick it together. I can put it in a clamp, uh, which I will. Um... But that's going to give you all the strength. Man, that's I should have done this years, year. Yeah, it's been about a year and a half. I should have done this a year and a half ago because it's so much easier. And I don't have to worry about, I have problems with splines. I just cannot get them to fit right. And so that, and I don't always want to see it on the outside. This gives you a flawless frame all the way around, and it's going to look great. So again, I'm going to finish drilling these out. Uh, get it glued up, get it in the clamp. Maybe I'll bring you along for that. I have a meeting uh, in about 45 minutes. So I'm going to try and get this done in 45 minutes and get it in glue. Okay, I got all the holes drilled. And now it's just a matter of smearing glue. And what I did was I went ahead and lettered each corner so I knew that it was going to go back the way it should. I think what I'm going to do is glue up these two and then glue up these two. And then hopefully this will all just kind of sneak together. Ain't no sneaking around here. All right, a little bit of glue. So I'm building this just really because my wife told me to. But like I said, this, this friend of the family is going through some health things. And you know, the end result is we just want to maybe bring a little bit of joy. Because in case you haven't noticed it, folks, there ain't a whole lot of joy in this world right now. Um, and there ain't a whole lot of, seemingly there ain't a whole lot of people that want to bring joy to someone else's life. Uh, unfortunately, society we live in wants us to bring misery into other people's life, it seems like to me. That's kind of what I see. Um, so, you know, try and spread a little bit of light instead of darkness, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because, folks, there's, there's enough darkness in the world now as it is. Wouldn't it be, you know, 
Be different. Spread light. We're gonna kind of smear that around a little bit. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing to the other two. Get my band clamp out. One time, it band clamp. That's not it. That's not how that goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish gluing this up and get the clamp on it. Get to my meeting. And then I'll bring you in when we're, there's going to be some finished sanding we have to do. And stuff like that. I'll tell you though, these dolls are so much nicer to work with. Try to kill me. Okay. A couple hours later, um, meeting was canceled, so I ate dinner. Awesome. Uh, out of clamps, glue up is done. Uh, looks really good, and it's solid, which is really all you want it to be. I have some finish sanding to do, which is going to be a little bit more than finish sanding. You know what that means. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I said that one piece cut a little bit thicker for some reason. So it cut a lot thicker for some reason. Now I'm looking at it. Holy cow. So I'm just going to sand that flush. Um, no one's going to know. And the same on the back. I don't know why. I don't know how that ended up so much thicker than the other ones. But uh, it's funny because I hand sanded all of this earlier with a with a... Uh, 120 and now I'm probably going to put a hundred on I'll have to do it all over again it, it'll be fine it's fine there are some tricks it looks like I have a little bit of a gap here there are some tricks that I can use that I have seen where you just kind of put some glue on there and you sand dust into it um, I don't know. We'll try it and see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded. I'll bring you back in and show you what it looks like when it's done. Hopefully it looks great. Okay. Went over it with uh, random orbit sander. Knocked on the high spots. So it's all nice and flush. The glue trick for the cracks actually worked pretty well. Um, it should take stain because it's actually dust, not the glue. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back over it again uh, with another 120. I'm going to go with the grain instead of random orbit. Uh, get that out of there because that's a splinter waiting to happen. Uh, and then we're going to stain. And then I don't think that the art is completely prepared. Um, that part is up to my wife. She's getting all that ready. Um, but I'll show you once everything's in place. How it's held. It's basically a staple gun, but it kicks it sideways instead. I'll show you what that is. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit torn because I know the only other piece of art in this room that's framed is framed in a, uh, the frame is black. I'm not making this black. I don't even really want to make it dark. Um, if you're going to make something out of wood, you need to be able to see the wood. Because otherwise, what's the point? So I am going to test this out. I have gloss black paint. I have red Solo Cup. It's not. It's Walmart Solo Cup. It's filled up to about there. I put as much water in as I... It's actually more water than I'm going to need to stain this. And we'll just put some in a little bit at a time until we get it where we want it. I mix this up and then I'm just gonna 
Ooh, that's weird. Okay. You know, I didn't check to see if it's water-based or not. If you're ever sure, go to cleanup. Warm soapy water. Yep. All right, so we'll just mix this up. It doesn't really look dark enough. It almost looks more gray. Still doesn't look dark enough. You know what I'm about to do. <laughs> Regrets. I have a few. It still looks gray though. I don't want gray. I want black. And I don't want to paint it. <sighs> when in doubt, more paint. Oh, that's a lot. That is a lot. I'm going to try it, but not with that rag. Holy crap. Okay. Black paint is upon me. Okay. Fold that up all nice and pretty. All right. I'm going to get some gloves. I'll be right back. Too late for that now. Folks, I got to tell you, I have got paint everywhere. Well, I don't like working with paint. Such a mess. Okay. That was the rag I was going to use. I'm going to do the back and then I'll set it in there. You would think I would clean off my workbench. Okay, the frame is, for all intents and purposes, done. Um, it, the stain didn't come out too bad. It is more black than it is brown, which is what I was shooting for. You can still see the wood grain, which is what I was shooting for. Uh, went with two coats of urethane. And the art is in place. The frame that's framing the art that's not the frame that I made is in place. And the backer is in place. So we have to hold that all together. This is a... <laughs> have to consult the box. This is a Logan dual drive elite point driver. Just shoots little tabs out. The tabs, you can get stiff tabs or bendable tabs. I always get bendable tabs. The reason being if 10 years from now, if the art slips or something like that, they can bend them up. They can reset it and put it in there. This thing shoots from the front, not the bottom. And so I always put two on, I hope I got enough room. Holy cow. I put two across the, the long side, one on each short side. There you go. Kind of line them up so that it doesn't look janky. Yep, totally did not line that one up. And so that just gives you these little tabs. And like I said, these are bendable, but it keeps everything in place. Now that that's all done, I never take the film completely off of the glass until everything's done. We're not actually everything done yet. I have to put a way to hang it on here. Um, normally I would put something in the side and use a piece of cable, but um, using the backer and the art was thicker than I thought it was. I don't have the room to do that, and that's fine. I can just put a little a common sawtooth hanger on there, and she'll be ready to hang. Uh, and then I'll pull the film off, because if it's out in the shop, I don't want it getting all scratched up and everything. So let me do that. I'll stick it on the wall, let you guys see what it looks like. Got the hardware in. Wanted to let you know this thing that I was talking about. Um, point driver, Logan, just looked on the uh, Amazon River website, and uh, it's right around 60 bucks so if you do a lot of picture frames it 
it pays for itself in uh, once really uh for what they're charging for picture frames nowadays my god anyway and i ain't charging near enough so if you're gonna do a lot of picture frames you really got to get one this is ready to hang on the wall i'll take you in and we'll show you what it looks like okay there it is on the wall please uh ignore my shaky hands as i try to hold the camera I think it came out really good. Not excited about the black, but you can see the wood grain. That's important to me. And in the end, is it gonna bring some joy into the world? Is it gonna lift this woman's spirits up a little bit? I hope so. That's the only reason I did this. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, maybe subscribe. I don't know, there's supposed to be a bell or something, all kinds of stuff you're supposed to do. Go ahead and do all that. I build stuff all the time. I'll let you watch. I'll see you on the next one.